Welcome back everyone. Today we have a review of a couple of different things. On Amazon, you've probably seen this uh, hibachi grill. It's like a mini hibachi. Today we're gonna take a look at it and see if it really does anything. Is this worth your dollar or, or not? So, I'm gonna go ahead and start by opening this up. You got the grill right here. I'll tell you about it. This thing, it's actually, it's pretty solid in its construction. I like that. This is the base. It's actual wood. Somebody had to go through the trouble of cutting it and putting some paint on there. Okay, here it goes. So this is what it looks like. I already took a look at it before. It has that calligraphy kind of wallpaper on it. You can see where the wrinkles in the paper are. It's fine, you know, I don't really care about that as long as uh, it works well. So this part goes right here. And I'll say maybe like that. And this part goes on top of it. And then this part goes on top of that, like this. One thing I notice is the base is a little wobbly. Like if I shake the table a little bit, you can see that the base is a little wobbly. And that's kind of not ideal for something that you're gonna put hot coals into. But today we're just gonna fix it with a toothpick. There we go. I'm gonna stick a toothpick right there. Now it's pretty solid. I'll just tuck it away right there. This coal is unusually expensive. This is called Fan by Pock Pock. And this is a fancy designer charcoal. This is supposed to be a high quality charcoal made from wood, like pressed wood. And it looks like this. So we had to hit it with a, the air blower. All right, I'm gonna put this guy right here. All right, so while I'm giving this another minute to fully heat up there, it actually is getting pretty hot. I'm gonna go ahead and prepare a little sauce for us. A little basic sauce, throw in some garlic, and some Thai chili peppers. All right, I'm gonna mash it up real good. It's kind of nice because um, these coals are very not smoky. Oh yeah, yeah, get back in there, get back in there. It's like magic actually. It's super hot and it's super not smoky. And uh, I had the, I had the fan, I had the vents on, just blasting this room with air. But it's so not smoky that I think we're gonna go and try to finish this video without any vent on. So that way we can still, um, you can still hear what I'm saying. All right, that right there, and I'm gonna add a little bit of delicious Japanese dipping sauce. If you're fancy, you could probably make this at home, but I'm not there yet. Boom. This is radish and ponzu sauce. I actually really like this one. It is actually getting pretty hot. I'm gonna hit this with just a little bit of oil. Oh my gosh, there's the smoke. All right, here we go. We're gonna hit it with some shrimp. I'm gonna see what happens. We're gonna have to use some time-lapse photography on this one. So uh, with a grill this size, three shrimp pretty much maxes it out. So I guess this is good for like, if you're just cooking for yourself or it's good for a date night. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it. The nice thing about shrimp is it doesn't take long to cook at all. I'm just gonna give it a little brush with the oil. All right, I'm gonna say these guys are done. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these from the fire. So we're kind of doing our tour of the Japanese market. This next one is called Norsen Lean Loin Kushi. So the nice thing about this particular meat is it already comes on a stick. So you can put this right here like this. And you can do several of them at a time. Little meat popsicles. There you go. I'm gonna throw a little bit of salt on here while they're cooking. Is it ready to flip? I don't know if it's too soon. That might've been a little premature. A little flare up there from the oil. Oh no, it's gonna make my meat dark. Oh no. I 
ay, ay, ay. All right, so I lost the skewer on this middle one here. It's about to break off. There it goes. Got a little too hot. I'm going to move it around just a little bit. I'm going to move this one to the outside. That one's a little too hot. Oh, boy. So you can see that the grill moves around a little bit. It's not ideal. But then again, I might have overloaded it with three of these skewers. All right, so I'm going to hit it with a little bit more seasoning, and uh, I'll be honest with you here. I don't remember which side I seasoned first, so the one side's going to be salty, and the other one's going to be kind of bland. But it'll balance out in your mouth. All right, I'm going to say these ones are donezo. All right, so, oh, look at that sizzle. So, yeah, that thing's definitely getting hot. Put this right over here. Oh, yeah. Put that right over there. And then we need an assist for that one. All right, so you can, this is what our grill looks like right now. It's a little bit... I uh, got, got a little oil on there. That's what's causing all the smoke. Next item, we're getting fancy here. This one is the calamari. Boom. And uh, I think while that one's cooking, it's time to give this a little taste test. I, um, I slid it down the back before I put it on the skewer so it'd be easy to peel. Does it make it easier to peel? I'm not sure. All right. I'm going to dip it right here in the, in the ponzu. Here it goes. Mm. Oh, that's actually delicious. That was actually super good. All right, item number next. I'm gonna get in here with one of these meat skewers. This one is pork belly. Put it right in the sauce, just a little bit. Mm, oh man. Super tender and delicious. I know I keep saying everything tastes good, but this really does taste good. All right, coming in here with a little bit of pork belly. I'll lay that right there. Pork belly is pretty ideal for grilling. I think I kind of missed the center with this one. There you go. All right, I'm gonna say these guys are about done here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove it from the fire because it is going crazy. Choice top round Momo Yakiniku. All right, I'm gonna come in here. Ooh, look at that. I'm not even sure, what, this is some kind of beef, but I'm thinking it's just some kind of high quality Japanese beef right here. I'm gonna go ahead and try this one just because I like the meat a little bit on the rare side. Look at all, you see all that, the juice is pulling up on the top of that meat there. I'll flip this one over. All right, I'm gonna go directly into my mouth with this, with this one. And uh, I might have to go to the emergency room after this because it might be piping hot. All right, it goes right into the sauce here. This might be super hot. All right, here it goes. I'm going to give it a try. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. That's super tender and delicious. One more dip. I double dip. So I wanted to show you what it looked like afterwards. I kind of cleaned it off a little bit and got the ashes out. But uh, yeah, there's uh, some problems here. If you look right here, there's cracks here, there's cracks here, and that crack goes all the way down the inside. And if you look inside here, I don't know if you can see it, but there are cracks all the way. I guess you can say that maybe I made it too hot um, blowing the air out <laughs> by going after it with the air gun. <laughs> but. Uh, if anything, that's like, um, that just, that's just like several uses in one use. It's lost all structural integrity and uh, you don't want to put hot coals into something that's just going to fall apart on you. And um, to the manufacturers of this product, I would say you just got to change one thing. Keep the mold, keep the molds because uh, I like the way this thing looks. It has a nice shape to it. But you gotta add like two more scoops of batter to the mix because this thing is just, it falls apart after one use. That's no good. It just needs to be a little stronger. It just needs to be a little stronger, then you'd be okay. Uh, and it, yeah, it's sad for me because I actually really like this thing. I wanted for this thing to work. Um, but anyway, that's that. Um, thank you for watching. 
Uh, please like and subscribe, and we'll have more content for you soon.